Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Ajaz Ahmed and we are going to discuss the issue of the Arab NATO which has been there for some time. Ajaz, this so-called Arab NATO which of course includes Israel as well, attempt to include also Pakistan, essentially not the old NATO which had Turkey but an anti-Iranian shall we say immediate configuration, anti-Russia, anti-Iranian, anti-Hezbollah and with Israel in its fold. How do you see this playing out? Do you think it has any long-term potential? Do you think it's a short-term attempt and it is not going to go anywhere? Um, I think it's, in my view, it's just praise mongering because uh, all it means is really the, uh, the new, now explicit, open alliance between the Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC, or rather parts of GCC, uh, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, and Israel. Pakistan cannot afford to be part of that uh, because Pakistan has very multiple relationships with China, Russia, and, and Iran. Uh, uh, Pakistanis actually play a balancing act with Iran and Saudi Arabia seeking some money from them, some money from them, and so forth. So Pakistanis are out with a begging bowl to China, Russia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and so forth. So they can't really take a, a serious position on this. And in Pakistan itself, Israel is so deeply hated that any explicit relationship with that would not be possible. You would recall that... Um, at the time of the Saudi Qatar uh, spat, Pakistan and Morocco actually stood uh, with Qatar, as did Iran and Turkey, against Saudi Arabia. When Saudi Arabia asked Pakistan to um, to uh, to take part in the invasion of Yemen, Pakistan is refused. That's true. So I don't see Pakistan as joining any of this. Um, Iraq, Syria, Qatar, Oman, all of North Africa, and so on. <laughs> Half or more of the Arab world is not part of this. It's really UAE and Saudi Arabia and Israel. And that is actually already in place. You know, you can sort of, uh, Americans love to have this kind of phrase mongering, you know, Arab NATO and so forth, uh, etc. So that, that's how I actually look at it. However, I would say that this new alliance between Israel and these two, um, UAE and Saudi Arabia, poses a very, very serious problem for the region as a whole. It's a, that is a major uh, development. And that is, I think, at the Warsaw Conference, the great victor of it was Netanyahu. Um, in my recent view. Warsaw Conference. That's right, yeah. Uh, in every other respect, in my uh, view, that was a great um, uh, failure for the United States. I was about to say embarrassment, but they don't get embarrassed. So, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was a great failure. Um, so, um, I, I think it's phrase wrong. But something very serious is afoot between I'm, Israel and Saudi I'm going to get into that just a moment later. But I wanted to ask you also, you talked about Pakistan and Iran, but the recent attack about three weeks back, which almost took place at the same time at the Pulwama right. blast, right. there was yeah. a similar uh, bombing inside Iran, bordering Pakistan. And Iran has taken a very tough position against Pakistan on that one, saying that you have been fostering these elements and they came from across the border. So how do you see Pakistan-Iran relationship in this context? This thing happens every year or six months or so. So this is something uh, part of the uh, Some Pakistani-sponsored uh, group carries out terrorist attacks in Iran, Iran, widely, um, etc. And then uh, the life goes on. Uh, in this case, I think it was a de for demonstration effect. Um, the Saudi cr crown prince was coming to the subcontinent. Um, it, Imran Khan was playing for 
maximization of Saudi finance money. Uh, and therefore, um, I mean, uh, Pakistan had two interests, I think. One, uh, to maximize the money and a terrorist attack inside Iran, uh, in, in, in both Balochistan and Sistan, uh, was a demonstration effect. If you give us money, we'll be, you know, we'll do these things for you. We'll con continue to do these things for you, etc. Um, uh, and on the other side was, of course, India, uh, where Pakistan is very, uh, very, very uh, perturbed that the relationship between Saudi Arabia and, in, and India may flourish. Um, I mean, uh, the Crown Prince, the Saudi Crown Prince, uh, promised $100 billion worth of investments in India. So, th therefore, these terror attacks, these are things. Pakistan needs to do this. This their idea of diplomacy. Okay, <laughs> leaving out both at the moment Pakistan and India's ideas of what diplomacy is. Coming back to what you raised, what you raised regarding the Warsaw Conference and Netanyahu's uh, emerging stronger out of it, and his basically saying this is a plan for attack on Iran. That's almost the subtext, if not the text of his uh, speech over there. We also have the Astana grouping, which is coming up, which is, of course, with respect to Syria. But it has seen Russia, uh, Iran, as well as Turkey come together. And Turkey, of course, is a, a bigger player in that region than Israel is, giving its economic and its uh, military strength. Do you think that is also building up a counterweight and it's actually going to, in that sense, go against the larger NATO American interest? There are certain, certain you see, um, I, I look at it as a, a moment in which the three, um, the, the three powers, Iran, uh, Turkey, and Russia, have some minimal uh, common interest. And therefore, this uh, process will actually go on. The main problem is that the Iranis know that the, the, the war in, in Syria began with the Turks giving arms and weapons to the Muslim Brotherhood. And because they did that, Saudis came in and gave, uh, you know, weapons and so on and brought in ISIS and Al-Qaeda and so forth. So, um, and the Muslim Brotherhood just got beaten out of the game. And since then, Turks have been trying to have, to play various games in Turkey. So, no, in, in, in Syria. So, neither the Russians nor the Iranis have any any deep interest in believing that Turkey will be a reliable partner. And at the same time, they need Turkey to, you know, to extricate themselves from the war in Syria. So there will be a negotiation as to what they can give the Turks in order for the Turks to sort of withdraw from the territory and so on. Um, Russians, I don't think, would be opposed to creating um, an autonomous Kurdish zone in parts of Syria, depending on how, how much autonomy you're talking about. So I think, I think it's that sort of thing. And yet the other thing is that <clears throat> there is a, an ideological um, competition between Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Which of them is going to be the main leader of the Sunni world? One is Wahhabi Islam, the other is Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood is deeply ideologically committed anti-monarchists. Qatar and Turkey are sponsoring Muslim Brotherhood. They have an alliance, but Turkey, uh, as soon as the, the Saudis threaten military action against Qatar, Turkey said that they would send in the troops. So, you know, there's all, all of this is going on. 
At the same time, Turks have a, what, they, what they call a strategic something, a cooperation council with Saudi Arabia. Um, so, you know, this, these are high stakes games in which no one actually has a settled position. I mean, China, Russia, I'm not talking about them, but these regional players, none of them have a settled position. Uh, Turkey has been allied with everybody at one point or the other, and, and the world. But so, yes, can we say? And, and yes, it's, a, it's an alternative process and a much more solid process. But in the long term, yeah, you were saying something. I say, looking at what you just said, Will we say that three countries have actually relatively fixed positions? One is Saudi Arabia, other is Iran, and other is Israel. And all others are somewhere in between? Um, yes, you could say that, uh, certainly. Um, they, they, they have interests that are long-term interests, certainly. Uh, in these, in, among these three, I would say that Saudi Arabia, yes, it has a fixed long-term position and a strategic, uh, you know, very aggressive um, role in the region in pursuit of those fixed positions entirely. But a lot of what they are going doing is, I think, undermining them. You know, uh, so it is the least stable of the three, 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 um, three of these, these countries, but otherwise you're right. These, these are the people who are, I would say, but that also has, you know, quite a consistent line. Uh, at no point in the last 15 years or so, since the since this young man took over, uh, they have not made a, 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 any serious you know, turn around here and there and so forth. So the, what, what you are saying that the Arab NATO is more phrase mongering, it really, does not have any long-term strategic uh, goals or salience as the earlier NATO extension in that region did, the Baghdad Pact. This is much more transient, temporary, and uh, shall we say it will also play out with respect to the other com competition and other uh, developments in the region. What I want to see in terms of this so-called Arab NATO is whether there emerges some sort of a document, um, agreement, uh, open or secret, uh, which gives the Americans the uh, right to station large scale, um, you know, large uh, number of troops and so on in pre-position weaponry okay. in, inside Saudi Arabia. Okay. Uh, that is something I, I would like to. to uh, because th that, if they're going to talk about, you know, NATO, et cetera, et cetera, and new NATO, um, uh, that, that, that is something to be seen. Um, however, you know, the, the, the situation is very unstable. Um, Netanyahu is about to be indicted. Attorney General has actually uh, announced that he's going to just... Um, look into three investigations a little more, and then uh, he, 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 and he wouldn't have said that if he was not intending to, to, to indict. He has made, Netanyahu in his desperation, has made this alliance with Israeli Nazis. I mean, they're really fascists, and they're known as such. Um, and American liberal Jewry, for the first time, the pro-Israeli jury just doesn't know which way to look. Uh, inside Israel, it's a storm. Um, you read Haaretz and so on, their newspapers, it's a storm. Um, so on the one hand, you go and talk to the anti-Semites out there. Awesome. You come home and you, 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 you talk to Jewish fascists, whom Jews call fascists. You know, um, you do this at home, you do that at home. And one of the ministers said that, yes, they are anti-Semites, but they are our friends. You know, so there is a lot of intern internal turmoil in Israel. Israel. Um, the Democrats have, have said in the United States 
that they, they have given a list of 81 counts on which they are going to investigate Trump for criminal conduct. Um, so, you know, these, the, these polities are from inside in a turmoil. So instability is wrong. Israelis and, and America is the only one that is stable is UAE. <laughs> so we don't know where any of this is going to go. In two years, there will be presidential elections. If somebody, if not Sanders, um, Warren or somebody, more progressive Democrats, happens to win, all of this will go for a toss. Thank you very much, Ajaz, for being with us. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click.